Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. In today's data culture video, we're going to look at the vital topic of measuring your success. Let's take a look. All right. In our series so far, we've looked at a lot of strategic and tactical factors that you can take into consideration and actions that you can take to help build a data culture inside your organization. But how do you know that it's working? How do you know today that the steps that you're taking now and tomorrow will actually be moving you towards the goals that you've set for a year or three years or five years from now? Now, this is one of the most complicated and difficult questions to ask. And because of that, a lot of organizations simply don't bother asking it. They assume that the steps that they're taking now will move them in the right direction and things will work out in the end. And honestly, for a lot of organizations, their starting point is so poor and the opportunities for success are so large that they can be successful this way. But it's not predictable and it's not something that you can rely on. So how do enterprise organizations that are building a data culture measure their success? One way is to look at the number of users that are creating and consuming content in their self-service BI environment. So using the Power BI usage metrics and other tools to understand what users are consuming what data, how often. The tricky thing here is that this isn't really a measurement of success. This is a measurement of usage. And even though the two may be correlated together, if someone is producing a report and publishing it, and then producing another duplicate or overlapping report and publishing it, this isn't really success. It's actually going in the opposite direction. It's making a mess, not moving towards those predefined goals. Still, if you understand who's doing what with what content, this is a valuable step in the right direction. Another way that organizations will measure success is looking at the number of reports and dashboards that are being created. So uh, again, measuring usage, not really measuring success at this point, because it's not the number of dashboards that you have. It is having the right dashboards, having the, the analytics available so that people that need to make decisions can make those decisions in a timely and data informed manner. If we think about this as the driver for the data culture, having the information about who is doing what and who is creating what. So, so what users are getting insights from the reports and dashboards and applications that are being developed by what users, either in the center of excellence, the central BI team or the broader community. This is a good way to understand what's happening and so that you can then map it to those longer term goals that you've defined. Another way to measure success is to look at how the number of uh, BI platforms or the number of reports and the volume and amount of report usage for legacy BI platforms is decreasing over time. It's very common to have a data culture effort coincide with the standardization and simplification of the broader data estate. Because if you think about a legacy data estate, very often there will be a large number of BI tools uh, where a lot of them were purchased either you know, when they were the best option for the goals at the time and then they were never retired when new platforms came in, or as is often the case with large global organizations, there will be uh, the consolidation through mergers and acquisitions. And when the parent company buys 10 other uh, companies and they now roll up in the same umbrella, each one of those companies is coming with uh, not only its own ERP and HR and supply chain and other uh, transactional applications, but it's also coming with its own analytics platform and all of the technical debt that comes with it. Measuring how both the usage and the support costs of these legacy applications will decrease as you're standardizing on one platform. This is another way 
to help you understand that the steps that you're taking today are moving you towards the strategic goals of your data culture. But if we step back a little, and if we look at the reason why an organization would even care about a data culture, the culture and the, the activities that make up the culture are not inherently valuable on their own. They're valuable because they deliver specific business results. If you think about the broader category of digital transformation, organizations will adopt new tools and new technologies, some of which are centered on data and analytics, but they adopt these not because they're new or because they're cool, they adopt them because they need to do it to survive. These new technologies enable a way of doing business that allows the organization, that allows the enterprise to remain competitive and to survive against upstarts and startups uh, and the established competition that is also going through this same uh, ongoing evolution. When we think about the results that we're, that we're trying to deliver, it all comes down to business metrics. Are we able to do things more efficiently? Are we able to reduce the, uh, the, the, the margin or reduce the overhead and increase the profit margin for the core uh, business activities that we're working on? And if we are, how can we tie this back to the investments that we're making in a BI platform and in the strategic and tactical changes necessary to build a data culture? Because none of this is simple and none of it is cheap. You have to worry about the tools and the licensing. You have to worry about the HR costs, the payroll, the ongoing expense of doing all of the things that we've talked about in this series. And in order to justify that, you need to be able to measure the impact that it's making. For all of the customers that I work with, very few of them have been able to deliberately and explicitly tie their investment in Power BI back to a specific business metric. It's hard to do, and many of them, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, simply say, we are now following more best practices, and the results will speak for themselves. But I've had a few customers that have told me uh, the same story. They basically are developing, their center of excellence is developing Power BI applications that put data in the hands of people that are, that are uh, working on a specific business process. So think salespeople that need information about the accounts that they work with to prioritize their activities. Or inventory management, where they need predictive analytics delivered through Power BI in the hands of store managers uh, so that they can order the right things and so on and so forth. These organizations have, have built from the ground up the platforms that allow them to both deliver the insights and to track who is using the application, how often, and in what contexts. And as they roll the applications out, they can say, people in this team are using the application and its insights more than people in this team, and then because they've instrumented it from the beginning, they can then say, and this team is failing to achieve the increases that we were hoping to see. This team is achieving it. We can uh, have a high level of confidence that the increase in performance, the increase of our ability to hit that business metric is actually tied to the application that we've developed and the use of that application. And if you think about the central BI applications that you and your team are developing, think about who's using them and who's not, and think about how you can measure their business effectiveness so that you can then close that loop and understand where to go next. Because it is a journey. Building a data culture is not something that happens overnight. And it's not something that you can scope out from the very beginning and understand exactly where you're going because the target is always going to change and the landscape in which you're executing is going to change over time as well. Being able to measure the steps that you're taking today and the impact that they're having against those business goals is vital both to justify today's work and to justify tomorrow's work and the funding that will enable it, 
because in any organization, there is always going to be that top-down budgetary pressure for every team or every organization or every department inside the organization to justify the funding for its work. One of the things that is a key part of Microsoft's corporate culture is before you get funding for something, you need to understand and define how you will measure the success of what you're doing. So if we're defining a new product or a new feature, we will say, this is what success will look like. This is how we measure it. And then as we're executing, we're constantly measuring and understanding, are we on track? Are we not on track? And we're able to be agile and responsive because we've identified up front what it is that we're trying to do and what success will look like. So please remember, as you're working to build a data culture inside your organization, you cannot be successful unless you understand what success looks like. I hope this is valuable. We'll see you next time.